Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Movie Social. I am your host, Ricky. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about episode six of season three for The Shy. And for this episode, it did divulge some more information, but we still got a lot to have answered and wait to see what happens. So for the main part of this episode, it was uh, Kevin's birthday. And then, of course, uh, you had to explore all the other, a lot of the other characters, but it centered around for Keisha and Kevin being Kevin's birthday and how they always celebrate his birthday by going to a diner and ordering certain kind of a meal each each time and they actually did a flashback to his last birthday before all this happened which is kind of odd because to me if it was his birthday then and this was right before her final year of college right before her final year of high school to be going to college and then the season started with her being in high school getting ready for her final year of college what point in time are we at now? How long has she been missing? Like, it makes no sense with that whole point of the dynamic. I don't know what the writers being lazy when they wrote that part in or what, but that whole part is kind of a major throw off on the timeline of the show. Other than that, a lot of the show is going pretty well. I would hope they address the timeline issue because that's a major component of the show. But going on, we got to see Ronnie uh, trying to figure out where he heard those possible screams from. Knocks on the actual person's door who has Keisha Kell captive. Manages to get inside the house. But the guy is always one step ahead of him. Keisha's banging and making loud screams, but at the same time, the tea kettle goes off. He already has the TV on, so it's really hard for Ronnie to hear. Who knows, maybe he did hear enough to suspect and his plan is safe to not get himself hurt or get Keisha hurt even further. Don't know. Have to wait to see because after that, of course, they cut from there. We don't see Ronnie again for the rest of the episode. And they're on the guy's kind of pissed off with Keisha for almost exposing everything as of right now we don't know who knows what her punishment is going to be down the line from the guy but gotta wait to see and then we go on with Emmett and Tiff going to Tiff's supplier while of course Emmett is no longer working at Sonny's after episode 5's issue they didn't divulge anymore on uh, Emmett's plans with the food business and all. So we have to wait to see what happens. Hopefully maybe episode 7 on what's going to go on with that one. But we at least got to see more into Keith, uh, Tiff's side. How, uh, where she's getting her supply from. And it turns out the, her main supplier is... Brandon's uh, cousin who Emmett winds up striking a deal with him to not have Keisha pay full price I'm sorry not have Tiff pay full price for the weed but instead give a discount and being able to bring in more money for both herself and Brandon's cousin we're gonna have to see how that plays out because we see the first person that she goes to since getting that uh, discount, doesn't have any money, offers to pay with a card reading. And that card reading probably didn't go too well for Emmett. Sad to say, what happens? As of right now, that's uh, one strike for Tiff on her uh, financial aspirations with this. Have to wait to see whether or not things pan out for the, her and Emmett or do things continue to fall and crumple? Because as it looks right now, everything's crumbling. And then we go on to Papa and Jake. All a part of uh, planning this big old surprise party for Kevin's birthday. 
But uh, uh, Papa goes to pick up the cake for Kevin's birthday, but runs into a big snag. First of all, the cake has the wrong name on it, and when they get the name corrected, it was just some ghetto trash way of fixing it by moving the letters around and all. I'm like, yeah, I would never have taken that cake. That was a no no. And it seemed like the whole, everybody in the cake restaurant, uh, well, store didn't really care to be there. And I'm like, yeah, no way. That would have been my business going in there. But uh, as things progress, they get the cake, they start walking it back. Papa and his now girlfriend walk it back. And he tries to hold her hand while holding the cake, and we all know what happens. It falls. He's still a kid. He's not able to manage both of those at the same time. Well, cake falls. Wrong cake. Who knows what's going to happen with that part. They no longer have a cake for Kevin's birthday. Meanwhile, Kevin's off with his girlfriend, his new girlfriend from school, out skating for his birthday. And Kevin, of course, overhears some kids uh, talking about the whole thing with Keisha being missing, which he did not want anybody at the school to know for obvious reasons. And, I mean, it played a factor in how they treated him and how they interacted. He thinks it's Jake that's told everything, but in reality, he finds out that it was and actually his girlfriend telling her mom, well, that's what she believes. And then there her mom telling the other kids' parents. And then they tell them the kids. Don't know for sure on whether or not her mom did do all that. But her heart was in the right place. But it was bad to begin with. Fast a little bit forward. Jake, in the meantime, is with his older brother. Because, of course, Jake is having issues with Otis. AKA Duda, where uh, Jake is uh, trying to figure out whether or not to trust Duda at all or trust his brother. Turns out, though, his brother had alternative motives of why he wanted Jake around him the whole day because one of uh, Duda's uh, men were trying to kill him the whole day, following him around, trying to wait for an opportunity to kill him. Meanwhile, his brother's uh, raiding one of Duda's stash houses, gets gets whatever he wants out of there, winds up knocking out the guy that was following him, and then that's when it hit Jake that, uh, yeah, he was keeping him around just to keep him safe. Jake goes off, leaves him, I mean, that's what happens. Back, sadly though, Jake uh, really has nobody but his friends. And kind of sometimes teaches his friends in a bad way. But while we're on Duda, we're going to talk about his mother joining the campaign for the other candidate running for mayor in the city of the uh, Duda. And got on the news and on, in the radio and all, bad mouthing her own son, saying that he should not be mayor. He's only out for himself. I mean, she wasn't fully wrong, but yikes. That coming from your old mother. Mm -hmm. But, who knows what can happen on there. We do see, though, that his wife, who really has not shown up in many episodes until now, tries to bribe his mother to go and say something else on TV, contradicting her own self, which really wouldn't have looked good anyway but of course the mother turns it down saying that uh the other candidate didn't ever approach her she approached the candidate cause she felt that way about her son which is not good uh, Otis actually walks in on that whole thing he's mad at both of them in a way don't know how it's gonna play out with him and his wife but we'll have to see maybe uh things break up and get heated who knows but Towards the end of the episode, we do get a bright light moment where they actually do surprise Kevin when he walks into the house after 
he gets a call from Keisha and the captive. Well, the cap, the person holding her captive. Even though she doesn't say anything, he doesn't know that it's really her. It was more so for her to hear his voice. It was a upsetting moment. I'm like, does she take the risk of screaming? Doesn't do her no good. But it would ease him knowing that she's still alive. But she doesn't. He ends up hanging up the phone, walks into the apartment, and there everybody is surprised. Surprises him. Mom walks out with the multi-layered pancake, which I must say is impressive. That many pancakes for a cake. And then saying that she didn't forget, which is cool. Everybody's walking away with smiles on their face for the end of the episode. Me, I'm still walking away with quite more question marks popping up over my head like, really? Are we not going to address the major issues on the show of the timeline? the uh, whole thing with why is it that Ronnie really did not truly hear what was going on who knows uh, but before we go I do have to remember one key moment for Ronnie in this episode that they did show him one more time with his grandmother taking her to an event then takes her back to her uh home sad news is though for her she passes away and it's also sad news for him as well she passes away immediately once she gets in bed which I kind of felt was off and odd I, so she immediately lays down and then dies like I don't know kind of just felt like that was just a rushed placement of her death just to get it over with but we'll have to see how that plays and affects Ronnie even more. Will he forget about the whole thing with Keisha and go back to being a drunk? Or will he have that as more motivation to find Keisha? To have a more meaningful life? Who knows? Just like, who knows will they uh, address these timeline issues? I don't know. But thank you guys for watching. Till next time.